In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the 11th and 12th chapters. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home so that when you come together it will not be for judgment. About the other things I will give directions when I come. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptation to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a devotional writing from Martin Luther for July 27th based on the text the Gospel of John chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 which read as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life here Christ uses the scriptures to point to himself he means to say that just as the Jews in the desert who were bitten by fiery serpents were saved by looking upon the serpent of brass, which Moses set upon a standard. So it is also with regard to me. No one who looks upon me will perish. All those who have an evil conscience are tormented by sin and death, should believe that I have come down from heaven for their sakes and have ascended again. Then neither sin nor death shall harm them. Whoever would enter, the, would enter heaven and be saved must be saved by this serpent, which is Christ. 
Thus, this gospel condemns free will and every human accomplishment and points only to this serpent. The spiritual significance of the narrative in Numbers is this. The serpent, which bit and poisoned the Jews, is sin, death, and an evil conscience. I know that I must die and that I am under the power of death. I cannot free myself and must remain in this state until a dead serpent is set up for me, one which can harm no one, but rather benefit, as did the serpent of Moses. Now this is Christ. I see him hanging on the cross, not beautiful, nor greatly honored, but I see him hanging in disgrace, like a murderer and malefactor. Thus reason must say that he is cursed before God. The Jews believed this to be true, and they could only consider him the most cursed of all men before God and the world. Moses had to set up a serpent of brass, which looked like the fiery serpents, but did not bite nor harm anyone, but rather save the people. Thus Christ also has the form and the appearance of a sinner, but has become my salvation. His death is my life. He atones for my sins and takes away from me the wrath of the Father. If man believes that de the death of Christ has taken away his sin, he becomes a new man. The carnal, natural man cannot believe that God will gratuitously take away and forgive all our sins. Reason argues you have sinned. You must also atone for your sin. The Gospel of Christ says you have sinned. Another must atone for you. Our works are nothing, but faith in Christ does it all. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.